Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday, June 16th, and over the past few weeks, something amazing has happened. There has been a huge influx in viewership and new subscribers to this channel. So I wanted to take a few moments, and I wanted to say hello and welcome aboard to all of the new subscribers that have joined over the past few weeks, and also give a shout-out and a huge thank you to all of the original subscribers back from last year and the early beginnings of the channel and everyone in between. Thank you all so much for your subscribership. Thank you all so much for your viewership. It's because of you all that give me the motivation to keep making these videos, and I wouldn't have the motivation to do it without you all. So thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart. For everyone watching this that has not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Follow along on the journey. If you don't want to, that's cool too. I appreciate your viewership nonetheless. I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to all of you. And now we'll move on to the content of this video. Over the past few weeks, I've had a number of people comment on my fig videos, and they've made mention that, wow, your figs look really great, or wow, you make it look really easy, uh, and things like that, really complimentary things that I really appreciate. Thank you for that, first off. Um, but I wanted to go over a few principles as to why my fig plants probably look as good as they do, and why they are as far along as they are. Uh, one thing I want you all to realize is every single one of my fig trees, except for one, where cutting started over the winter. My Violette de Bordeaux, which is the one the furthest over to the right, that is my only tree from last year, and I pruned it back heavily. Every other plant is from this winter, and they were just started by uh, from little cuttings. So back in March, there wasn't much going on. I up-potted these all in April. So really, this is only about two, two and a half months worth of growth. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here is one of my Col de Dame Noirs, already loading up with figs. You can see them in here. Here's my other Col de Dame Noir. You can see the figlets starting right here. Here's my Italian 258, loaded up with very large figs. Here's my Olympian, loaded up with large figs. Here's my Smith tree, full of fruit. Here's my Laterula Italian honey. You can see the fruits forming. Here's my Raspberry Latte, incredibly vigorous. with one fruit forming in the back. Here's my Chicago Hardy. You can see all the fruits forming. Here is my Col de Dame de Cutat, which is a later season fig. I've only had this for a little over a month. Here is my Borgesote Blanca Negra. You can see the figs forming. Here is my Sal Miguel Roxo, aka Azorus Dark. Loading up with figlets. Here is my Martinica Ramada. The main stem is loading up with figs. This was one of the last cuttings that I planted. And you can see how the original leaves down at the bottom show signs of fig mosaic virus, whereas the leaves on top do not. As you go up, they get considerably less infected until the infection all but goes away. Here is my Marseille Black MBVS, which I didn't even try to start rooting until the end of March, and I didn't up-pot this until May 2nd. Here is my Black Madeira KK. You can see all the figs down there. And up along this stem. Here is my Col de Dame Blanc, which I purchased as a tree. It was just a little tiny tree, and I didn't plant it until May 2nd. You can already see at the nodes here, I'm getting double bumps. So this, these will be figs in maybe a week or two. 
Here is my Col de Dame Ramada. I purchased this tree at the same time as my Col de Dame Blanc. This was also a very, very tiny plant, but it is starting to get double bumps on the nodes. So in the next couple of weeks, they should turn into figs. So as you can see, despite the fact that most of these figs are so young, and they've really only been in their pots for about two months or so, most of them look great. They're several feet tall, the leaves look nice and healthy and green, and they're all producing a tremendous amount of fruit. I'm very happy about that. All of my trees, for the most part, except for the ones that I just up-potted within the past month, that are notorious late-season varieties, have fruit on them. And how did I achieve this? Well, I think it's just because of my fertilizer regimen and my warm temperatures and my exposure to sun. One of the benefits of my climate is that uh, starting about April 15th, every day moving forward is in the 80s. So we've had 80 degree weather for almost two months straight, minus a few days, a few off cool days here and there. And we've had a, com uh, and we've had a considerable amount of 90 degree weather as well. So the heat definitely helps spur growth, but I also believe that my fertilizer regimen has a lot to do with it. And I've really honed how I fertilize my plants over the years, and I want to demonstrate to you exactly what I do that I believe is helping produce these lush, green, beautiful, fruit-laden fig trees, despite them being basically brand new cuttings. Before we can really discuss how to fertilize, we have to understand the concept of fertilizing our garden. As human beings, you probably know that the three macronutrients that we need are fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Those are our three macronutrients. Well, plants have three macronutrients as well. With plants, the three primary macronutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. When you buy fertilizer, every single fertilizer will have a breakdown written on the bag somewhere of the breakdown of those three macronutrients. So here's an example here. Three, five, and six. They symbolize the three macronutrients. The first one is N, or nitrogen. The second one is P, or phosphorus, the third one is K, or potassium. If you remember your periodic table of elements from high school, nitrogen, N, P, phosphorus, K, potassium. That's all that means. And what your first number, nitrogen, means, nitrogen is what drives the leaf growth of the plant. Giving your plants, regardless what plant it is, high nitrogen fertilizer will give it big, bushy, dark green leaves. Your second number, P, phosphorus. Phosphorus is what drives the flowering, fruiting, and root growth processes. Giving your plants high phosphorus food drives root growth, it drives blossom blooming, and it drives, um, it drives the fruiting process. K, potassium, that uh, potassium in a plant is, it's a cofactor for chemical reactions. So uh, what that means is that giving your plant potassium will just overall drive the general health of the plant. It's not too much more than that. Uh, your main things that you want to focus on when you fertilize for your, for your vegetable garden are going to be nitrogen and phosphorus. And people mess up the nitrogen balance all the time. That's one of the key problems that people have with fertilizing. If they give uh, too much nitrogen, you will get a very, very bushy and green bush. And that's great for when you're, when you're growing uh, lettuce and spinach and anything where you actually eat the leaves. If you want to eat the leaves, high nitrogen fertilizers are great. But if you are growing flowering plants, even if they're just ornamental and you're growing flowers, or if you're growing anything that's going to yield fruits, like a tomato, or a pepper, or a fig, or apples, or what have you, anything where you're going to eat the fruit of that plant, you need to have a, a, a fertilizer that is higher in phosphorus. Now there are two theories that gardeners often practice when they properly fertilize their garden. The first theory goes, I'm going to start out my garden with high nitrogen fertilizers because in the initial growing and transplanting phase, I want everything to grow really quickly. I want fast stem growth. I want fast leaf growth. After the first couple of fertilizing phases, when it starts coming time to flower, I'm going to back off on the nitrogen fertilizer and I'm going to get myself a lower nitrogen fertilizer, higher in phosphorus. 
fibrous. And this transition is going to help with the formation of flowering and fruits. If you keep fertilizing with high nitrogen fertilizer all year, you will not, will not, will not grow a lot of flowers and fruit a lot. I have proven this beyond all reasonable doubt. If you use Miracle All-Purpose Fertilizer, which is very high in nitrogen, on your tomatoes all year, you will not get a lot of flowers. You will get huge bushy tomatoes that don't have a lot of fruit. The other theory is that you just stick with a 555 or a 101010 or a 151515 or 202020 perfectly balanced fertilizer all year long. That is another theory that you can practice. Now the way I fertilized my plants this year was with the first approach. When I transplanted all of my fig cuttings, I initially gave them higher nitrogen fertilizer on that initial transplant and only that initial transplant. From there, I immediately backed off to a more balanced approach. Now, when I say more balanced approach, I mean a more equal balance of nitrogen and phosphorus. So, what you see here, you see this, this vegetable and tomato food, 3, 5, 6. That is a lower nitrogen formula. But for slow-release fertilizers with numbers this low, they're, they don't quite mean as much. Uh, I usually like to use a 555, but fertilizers are very expensive this time of year. You don't get any sales in the, in the middle of summer, and this Walmart brand is by far the best deal. And I'm actually okay with a lower nitrogen number because it's really easy to supplement with nitrogen. So there are two things you want to do. You want to focus on a slow-release fertilizer regimen and a quick-release soluble fertilizer regimen. So we're going to start with the slow release. The slow release regimen, I use an organic fertilizer and I, I add them every two weeks. These slow release organic fertilizers take a long time to break down. They, they use the native soil biology to break it down. And because all of my figs are in containers this year, you have to actually fertilize containers more often. If you had an in-ground fig tree, you could probably just fertilize it in the beginning and middle of the season uh, with, a, with a heavy amount of slow-release fertilizer and let it go. But because you're in containers, every time you water them and every time it rains, it flushes out the containers. The roots don't have the whole earth to absorb nutrients from. So you should really fertilize your containers uh, every 7 to 10 days with soluble and every 14 days or so with a slow release. So this part is really easy. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take a container, any container, and I'm going to add in this 356 fertilizer. And again, you don't have to use 356. I'd actually recommend a 555 if you can find a good deal on a, on a balanced 555 where all the numbers are the same. And to this, <clears throat> and to this, I'm going to add some bone meal. Bone meal is an organic source of phosphorus. It's made from ground up bones. So to this, I like to add just a tablespoon. Uh, this is a miracle Grow scooper. I think it's a tablespoon and a half. So I like to add one rounded scoop of bone meal, and I like to mix that in. And the reason why I like to do that is because phosphorus is very important for the, fruit, for the fruiting process of figs. And I only do this once the figs start appearing. Once the little tiny double bumps start forming on the node, if this was part of if this was early in the year, I would just give it the organic fertilizer. I would not add the bone meal. So again, the miracle Grow scooper is 1.5 tablespoons. So all I'm going to do is go around all of my pots and give them a rounded scoop of the mix that I just made. And that's going to be about two tablespoons of mix. You're going to do that every two weeks. And you can just really quickly rub it into the top of the soil and that is literally all there is to do when it comes to adding your slow release fertilizer. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this to every single plant. 
Alright, now that the slow release fertilizers have been applied, we can move on to the soluble fertilizers. Now there are a few principles of soluble fertilizers that we have to review. First off, always apply your slow release fertilizer first. And the reason why is you have to wet the slow release fertilizer granules for them to begin the breakdown process. So put them in before everything is dry. Second, Soluble fertilizers. You are going to notice that I am not using organic fertilizers for this. I'm using commercial chemical fertilizers. And the reason why I am choosing to do this is because soluble fertilizers are enhanced. They're already pre-broken down chemicals, so they are designed to be immediately uptaken by the plants. Granulated organic fertilizers are designed to be broken down by the microbiome in the soil. They feed the native good bacteria, the native good fungi, they feed earthworms, they feed all of that stuff. The soluble fertilizers do not. So I don't care if I apply a chemical or an organic. The chemical fertilizers are much cheaper and they don't build the soil like the organic slow release stuff does. So I'm not spending the extra money on something that's not going to benefit me in any real way. So that being said, miracle Grow has done a tremendous disservice to the industry in my opinion by their label of all-purpose fertilizer. Now, I bought the Walmart brand knockoff miracle Grow, but it's the exact same stuff in terms of macronutrients. So here you can see uh, the all-purpose miracle Grow fertilizer is 24% nitrogen, 8% phosphate, and 16% potash. So that's an NPK of 24,816. This is incredibly high nitrogen stuff. If you notice, on the front, they show flowers, tomatoes, and bushes. This fertilizer is terrible for tomatoes and flowers. Because the phosphorus is so low and the nitrogen is so high, it promotes leafy growth above all else. It promotes the formation of leaves and thick stems. It does not promote flowering and fruit. I have had terrible luck using that for any kind of vegetable or fruit where I want to actually pick something and eat it, like a pepper, a tomato, or a zucchini, what have you. They're all fruiting vegetables. You do not want to use that. That should be used for leafy green growth. That's all. The best chemical fertilizer that I've found for fruiting is actually the miracle Grow plant food tomato. If you turn this around, this is 181821. So the nutrients are very, very balanced. This is sim more similar to a 101010 or 202020. This is excellent for fruiting. I have not had any problems with flower drop with the Miracle Grow tomato. So I actually use Miracle Grow tomato as all purpose fertilizer. I suggest you do too. The only thing you should use the all purpose 24816 fertilizer for is for the initial transplant when there are no flowers and they're very young and you just want your transplants to put on leafy growth and thick stems or if you have non-flowering non-fruiting vegetation like some type of just green shrubbery that you use for landscaping it's good for that but that is it the other thing that you'll want to notice um, is the the watering can instructions mix one and a half tablespoons which is the large end of the enclosed scoop per half uh, per one and a half gallons of water so that's one and a half tablespoons per one and a half gallons of water or one tablespoon per gallon this is the scooper these are five gallon buckets what i am going to do is i'm going to add two scoops into each so that is going to be three tablespoons per five gallon bucket. So that's one, two, one, two. And that is really only more than a half strength feeding. I do not like giving plants full strength feedings. I like giving them half strength feedings twice as often. Imagine if you were a human being and you were raising a child and the way that you were going to uh, raise them is to starve them and then give them a huge all you can eat buffet. That's probably not what you want to do. You want to slowly feed them more often. I would think it would be a little healthier for a person. Why not for a plant? 
The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the Alaska Fish Fertilizer. Now that is 511, so it's very high in nitrogen. So um, I don't like using a tremendous amount of this because it's so high in nitrogen, but it's also full of micronutrients because it's a processed whole fish product. So I just like giving it a little splash. That's probably about three tablespoons or so. And that right there is going to be my mix for my five gallon buckets. That will be a very, very balanced blend of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium with also the real organic whole nutrition and all of the micronutrients that you find inside of whole fish. Alright, now that that's all mixed together, we're going to apply it to our containers. And all you're going to do is give each container about an inch to two inches worth. And that's all there is to it. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for future updates and more videos like these. I really appreciate your viewership, and I hope to see you again on the next video.